Good evening, I am Brett Blanchard, the principal of BFA, and thank you for joining us tonight. This is the third, and the last actually, for the 2021 series, looking at senior celebrations and giving as much information as we can. We will still keep Teresa's Tuesday's update, so you'll be sure that any changes, that Tuesday newsletter will keep running all the way up until graduation week. With us tonight in the back helping run things, we have Dino and Sydney. thank you for coming. Director Wright is with us. We have Mary Ellen Torville who will be up here telling about the amazing events that we have coming up in June. And for all the questions and everything else, as you probably know already, Teresa Callen is here. Rundown of the agenda tonight, introductions already done. We'll get to the senior update, and as you'll hear Ms. Torville say, we'll take questions during her segment. I will take graduation questions at the end. So BFA Senior Week, before I invite Ms. Torville up here, the first of the senior meetings that we've had since really the beginning of the year when we went up to the complex, um, I loved seeing the enthusiasm. The feedback that I heard was openly excited about what's going on, so we hope you will be also. So without further ado, Mary Ellen Torville will be up here to run you through the week and then take questions. I am super excited to share with you the information we have about Senior Week. It's taken a lot of work to put together, but the students are excited about it. It feels like the first time in a long time that everybody's been free to be high school seniors, and uh, that for me is really personal. I have a daughter who's a senior, so not only am I a, an English teacher here, I also am a parent in your shoes, so I understand what this is like. So I want to first of all thank everybody for all of the donations and the um, outpouring of help and offers that came since our last online meeting. Um, I'm blown away by your support and by the community. We have an incredible community here. We're so lucky. Uh, the local businesses have gone above and beyond to support our seniors, and you parents have done the same. We really don't need a whole lot more. We are ready to go. This week is going to blow the kids' minds. We have so many special things for them. Um, I want to give a special thank you to Kristen Trombley, who's been doing a lot of back scenes work to get donations. At this point, Kristen has pulled together, I think we have 60 pretty amazing prizes to draw and give away to students over the course of the week. Um, and I know that some parents are bringing some additional things in, so we have a lot to give away and a lot of really uh, fun, exciting prizes for kids to walk away with. Um, we did also hear your feedback after our last session, and um, we know that there were some concerns about our potluck, so we've made some big changes to that, and I'll tell you about it in a minute. We also heard some feedback from students about um, their desire to wear formal attire, so we've sort of changed our approach a little bit, and I will also talk to you about that um, when I'm going over the different days of the week. Um, We've gotten some really important feedback to help this week be what it was intended to be, which is special for the kids and what the students are looking to have in their final week here at BFA. So we're hoping that what we've put together here, and this is our final draft, um, obviously there may be small changes, but this is what we intend to follow through on for our senior week. We're hoping that this is going to um, meet the needs of all students. And um, there's a little bit of everything on here. There are afternoon events. There are evening events, there are daytime events, there should be something for everybody in this list. We'd love to think everybody will do the whole week, but um, certainly students can pick and choose from the events of the week. So the first thing is the, the big kickoff event, and that is Prom Fire. And that is open to BFA 11th and 12th graders only. Um, because of COVID, we had to make the, the cutoff there, unfortunately, and, and that's a tricky one sometimes, but we had to do that to keep everybody safe and to um, meet all the state guidelines. So um, Prom Fire is going to be a prom like you have never seen. It, it is, um, we've got a huge tent, a big white um, tent and a dance floor and hundreds of strings of lights. We've got amazing decorations. We've got s'mores cupcakes and we have um, cotton candy. We have french fries for everybody. And all of this is free of charge for students. 
Um, there's going to be a DJ. There are going to be lawn games in the dark with glow sticks and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, we've got multiple photography opportunities for students. We have a photo booth where they can print pictures. We have um, a professional photographer who will do paid um, posed photo packages at prom. And then we also have a professional photographer doing candid pictures that will be available online for free for all students after the event. At the, um, toward the end of the evening, we have a big bonfire. We'll also have some fire dancers performing for students um, once it gets really dark. It's just going to be a wonderful night. And we want students to come. Um, generally, we want everyone to be able to come. So we are saying semi-formal attire, and students can decide what that looks like for them. There's no dress code. So you come to prom wearing what you're comfortable coming in. And we know that you know it's getting close, and you know spending money on a tux is not always in the cards for everybody. So please um, encourage all students to come as they are. We do have some dress swaps going on here at school, so keep an eye on the announcements. We are um, asking students to reserve tickets for this event. Um, and so in the next week or so, students will get an email asking them which events in the senior week they'd like to participate in. If they select the prom, then we will give them a ticket in their advisory, and that ticket will get them into prom. What I'd like to do, I'm sure people have a lot of questions about these events, and as I go through them, if you have questions that pop up, please feel free to put them in the chat, and I'll go through the whole week of events, and if I answer them, great, and if I don't, I'll address them before I sit back down after the presentation. So Sunday is a day off from the senior week events, but Monday, we are going to kick it off with our breakout to the Bay Day. And Monday will be senior parking day on campus. We're giving the seniors the parking lot. Teachers will have to fend for themselves that day. Um, and we'll have you know, signs and a, some police officers to make sure it is just for seniors in that parking lot that morning. And seniors will park there. And at 2 o'clock, they'll be dismissed from their classes. They'll get to go out in the parking lot. And there'll be all sorts of decorations. And they can decorate their cars in green and gold. Once that's done, um, we will go at 2.30 on a parade around St. Albans. We'll go around Taylor Park. It'll be police escorted. And then we will end the parade at, at Bay Park, where from 3.30 to 6, we will have festivities. There's going to be live music. There'll be mini horses. There will be temporary tattoos. There will be uh, shaved ice and fried dough and wiffle ball and volleyball and all sorts of things for students to do while they're down there. There will be a bus that day. So if you are a student who doesn't have a car and you want to participate, we'll have a bus. You can decorate the whole bus, and the bus will participate in the parade, and um, it will bring you down to the bay for all of the activities. The bus will not bring you back to school, though, so you will need to have a ride home from the bay when you're done um, celebrating. Then on. Tuesday, we have pizza in the park day. That day is required for all students because students need to come at 10.30 to the cafeteria window to pick up caps and gowns and to get your yearbooks. Once you get those, you'll walk over to Taylor Park where there will be pizza and soda. We'll have a magician doing some entertainment for you and you'll get to sit and sign yearbooks and just enjoy hopefully some good weather with your friends um, before heading back to school for your final class. On Wednesday, we have our cruise. The, it's the Spirit of Ethan Allen cruise. We leave the dock in Burlington at 2 o'clock, and the cruise goes until 5 o'clock. On the cruise, we'll have food and drinks. We'll have music. We'll have karaoke. We'll have a pair of BFA sunglasses for every senior. We'll have green and gold beads and lots of green and gold balloons. There will be a bus that will leave BFA at 1 o'clock to bring students down to the cruise. And um, on your, we're going to send out an email to find out how many people need that bus on that day so that we can um, plan, make sure we have enough spaces for everyone. There isn't great parking in Burlington for students, so we will be working on a plan to tell them where to go and where to park when we get a little bit closer. 
on Thursday night, we have an outdoor movie night, and that is being brought to us by the Booster Club. They're giving free popcorn to all seniors. We, um, all seniors will be getting a Senior Week t-shirt, and we're asking seniors to wear those t-shirts at the movie night because the boosters help to pay for those. So um, those should be coming in the next week or so, and we'll get them out to students as soon as we can so you can start wearing them. At the movie night, by the way, we don't know what movie's going to play yet. People, people keep asking. We will probably put out a poll and get some suggestions from students. It's going to be at the complex on the football field, and um, students will be sitting in the stands. And if it's rainy, we're going to have to do it inside, but we'll still do it at the complex. There will be candy and hot dogs and soda for sale at the booster booth, um, food booth, but the popcorn will be free. And then the last day of our senior festivities that leads us up into graduation, we are having, well, graduation rehearsal is required for all students. It starts at 2.30, and Mr. Blanchard will talk to you more about what that looks like and what to expect for that. But we wanted to have a little something for parents, too, because we know the parents have been a big part of getting students where they are, and parents deserve to celebrate a little this week, too. It's been a, it's been a long COVID quarantine, and, and we're ready to be a part of, of things with our students again. So um, at 4.30, we have Ben & Jerry's ice cream and cupcakes and cake for all seniors and their families. So you can come to the complex at 4.30 and participate in that. We have also hired a professional photographer who will do posed group photos at that event. So if you want to do a family picture, it will be free. You'll have access to those pictures online. We'd love to have you come and do that. Or students can do group friend group photos as well at that event. It will be free for everybody. And then that brings us to the big day, which is graduation. But I would like to quickly talk about, or answer any questions that people have about the senior week events, the fun events that I've listed. So if we have questions in the chat, I can address those. We're good. I would point out that um, because of the COVID situation and all of the state regulations, we um, unfortunately we really can't have parent chaperones on these events. Um, and you know, I'm sorry to have to to have to say that, but um, it's the only way that we can make sure we have these events and we're abiding by all the guidelines. At this moment, that is is how things are going to have to be. Um, we did open up the Friday event for parents because we, we know how much you want to be a part of things. And I'm sorry if we can't get you more involved in the rest of the week. If questions do come up, we can always answer them at the end. <laughs> so um, this all came about because students were really not happy with our original week's plan because they wanted to wear something fancy, some of them. Um, so the answer to the question is, if they want to wear formal wear on the cruise, they can. It's not a formal cruise. So I'm hearing students who are going to wear shorts and t-shirts that day, and I'm hearing students who are going to wear evening gowns. It is up to you. The idea is whatever makes you happy is the way you should come to that event. Okay, if more questions come up, I can also come back at the end and answer them. Thank you, Mrs. Torval. really appreciate that. Again, as you may have just heard, if there's questions, just ask, put them in the chat, we'll see that they get answered. So now towards the graduation, you can see Friday at 2.30, it is imperative that all students show up because we need to rehearse for two different events. Before we get to that, as people probably have seen the latest guidelines, if not, you can see they moved us up from stage two to stage three a little early. 
What that allows us to do is to have 900 people outside that are actually unvaccinated. We are keeping everything right now outdoors, but we must plan for indoors if the weather is inclement and not likely to change Saturday morning. A few things that we have to take into consideration, and if it changes, then we will adjust to make it even more student-centered. For right now, we are gonna be out on the athletic field, the track field, some call it the football field, where the stadium is, and we will have around 1,000 chairs out there, making sure they're six feet apart so people may take off their masks. We will have the students front and center. We have professional sound, staging, making sure that it is as professional, respectful, because that's what these students really deserve and what these students have earned to get to this point. They're going to be three feet apart at this moment because that's what the state regulations allow. Should we have to move indoor? So we are scheduled for Saturday at 11 o'clock out at the stadium. You will have ushers there that will help you to a seat. The seats are not assigned, but we're going to escort people to an area to make sure that everything's well organized, to make sure that the chairs, everything stays put. And again, it's really about students being front and center. So the one thing that was loud and clear from students happened to be that we want to be all together, we want to graduate together, and then have some family there. So those are our priorities as we look. We're allowing four tickets for the outdoor celebration. Should we have to move indoor at the same time, Saturday at 11, it'll only be two tickets given that we still have mandates with spacing. So again, we're gonna have four tickets outdoor. If we have to move it in, we'll make that call as early as possible. That will then necessitate two tickets only for each graduate and we're going to have that then at the complex. So everything will either be at the stadium or indoors at the tennis court where things have been held in the past. You'll also see from Teresa, she'll be giving you a, a pre-registration form so we can get some important information. We can get the tickets to you, which we already have those made. And we will be asking a question that you do not need to answer, and that is, are you fully vaccinated by the time graduation is to be held? Mention all that, it's the rain that's gonna be the only issue. Otherwise, I wanna be very clear, we plan on outdoors, that's what we're setting up. We are gonna set both up simultaneously so that we can decide to move one or the other and shift fairly seamlessly. Real busy last six weeks. We already got about a third of the events up there and I'm really proud that we're hosting everything that we can live coming up. Everything has been streamed live that we can and as you just heard, an amazing series of events for students the like that I've never seen. And certainly, well, it makes me a little uneasy as administrator here, but fire walkers, fire dancers, um, I know enough to stay out of it and look forward to being there. Won't go over all those, people have seen those. We already have a whole formal plan of how the seats are gonna be arranged for graduation. We will make that public once we have one last meeting with the professionals running the music, running the staging and all of that. Now two questions. Thank you. So Ms. Callan just reminded me, we will have the question on the form about accessibility. Do you need handicapped um, parking? Do you need handicapped seating? And we'll see that that gets arranged. So the guidelines from the state of Vermont, not the CDC, but the AOE has said that right now students need to be masked. That's my answer, period. And we're hoping that changes. Is it for each graduate or each Pell school? In a divorced family, there are step parents. It's a great question. I am very sympathetic to that. It's four tickets per graduate 
because that is really the maximum seating that we can get outdoors. So while, while I do understand, and we are sympathetic with this, there's four tickets per graduate. And it will be live streamed. And yes, and Dino just mentioned, it will be live streamed. One, if people are more comfortable being at the house, also allows a greater um, community base to be able to see this event live. So we're gonna make sure that is all arranged and we already have a plan to see that it's first rate. In this case, at the graduation, are we going to have to choose between step parents and students, siblings? You'll have to make the decision of the four tickets who will be attending. If it's indoors, it's a difficult decision, but you'll have to decide which two attends. It's actually not that this is going to help any, it's actually the same scenario I am in with my daughter's graduation. Two tickets maximum. If you're fully vaccinated, do you have to wear a mask? If you are one of the community that will be in attendance, we have these seats six feet apart, you will not have to wear a mask. The students, again, right now, the way it's situated, will be three feet apart. They must wear a mask, except when receiving the diploma and getting their pictures taken. So while this is the last YouTube Live, again, it's not the last communication. And as hopefully you've seen, Ms. Callan will get right back to you with questions. Um, some people reached out to me. We've tried to make sure that questions are answered as quickly as we can. And any update, especially how the AOE is going to adjust any guidelines and how they'll impact graduation, that'll be made known as soon as we can. I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. And I'm super excited for the end of the year. And I don't mean that as it may have just sounded. I'm super excited to be able to be part of the senior week, part of this graduation, and really do appreciate it. Ms. Torville said all the community support. It's been overwhelming in the best possible means. Have a great night.